Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Welcome to part two of working on my Socotra Island Desert Rose landscape, preparing it for the upcoming KW Bonsai Show, which is in two days. In part one, I prepared all the trees, pruned them up, added the sand to the landscape. Today, I'm going to detail it with rocks and the finishing touches. Also in part one, I prepared the stand. I added the black tar to it to make it look a little better. And today I'm going to paint up my photographer to add to the landscape. I haven't tried the forest on top of the stand since I added the black tar to the stand, so I'll do that now. All right, here I go. Right about there, I think. Here is a look at the forest on the stand. Yeah, I, I think it looks quite nice on it. Uh, the size is good. It's a very plain looking stand. And I, I think the dark color is, you know, quite good with it. The landscape on Socotra Island is just littered with rocks and stones. So I'm going to add all those little details now to make it look a little more realistic. I'll begin by sprinkling some gray sort of turfus like particles around the desert rose and I'll sprinkle some on the landscape here and I may have to you know adjust it add more take some away until I get it looking just right so I don't want it uniform looking I, I uh, I want it to look, you know, fairly random. Sounds like it's starting to rain outside. Okay, I think that's good for those, that style of stones. Now I need to find a different kind of, you know, gravel to add. I think before I add more gravel, I'm just going to press these down into the soil a bit to make them look like they've been there a while that they're not just sprinkled on but kind of planted. I've got a handful of smaller rocks that I'll place around. Somewhere. Okay, that helps a little bit. I'm going to try a sprinkling of these, you know, the reddish colored athletic turfus, just to kind of provide a bit of variation in color here and there. Yeah, I think that looks good. I think that's enough. Now I might add uh, some different colored sand too. Again, just to provide a bit of variation in color. So I'll try that, see how it looks. I've got the fines from the athletic turfus, so I'll just sprinkle a bit of that here and there. I think that's good. People who are familiar with Socotra Island will kind of recognize the scale value of this forest. You know, imagining these as giant desert roses growing. However, I think I'll add the photographer in just to give it a scale value for people who aren't familiar with Socotra Island. I, I think it'll add sort of a feeling of these being giant uh, desert rows. So I need to paint up the photographer. So I'll do that next. I'll start by painting the camera black. This isn't a very good brush for this. Oh my goodness. Well, the camera is black. And so is everything around the camera. But that's a start. Okay, next I need to pick out a color scheme for this person. Um, you know, generally I would say if you're on Socotra Island, you want fairly light clothing. So maybe like a desert tan 
jacket or shirt and cocky pants or something like that. So I'll try and do that. Well, I've put the burnt umber on the photographer. It doesn't look very good. It's not the right color brown, that's for sure. So I'll try a green on the, the top. I'm going to try blue as the hat color, sort of like a, maybe a denim hat. And I think I might change the color scheme of the person too. I, I'm not liking much of it yet at all. I'm going to try painting blue over top of the green. It might look horrible, but I'll try it. Okay, I'll let that dry. Looks maybe a little better. I collected some gravel from the driveway, some fine gravel. So I'll sprinkle that on the landscape and see how it looks. Again, just to provide some variation. All right, back to doing the photographer. I'm going to paint a bit of flesh color, which doesn't look like a flesh color on his face. Well, I guess that'll have to do. At least the face isn't white anymore. Yeah, that'll have to do. Okay, I, I'm going to try the blue on the pants now. Going for a overall blue theme. Yeah, I think it's working. I think it's the undertones are providing just enough color variation to make it look like separate pieces of clothing. Okay, I'll let that dry now. Next, I'm going to brush on some white highlights to kind of shade the figure a little more. So, here I go. That's okay. And a little more black on the camera. And I think I'll call that done. My blue photographer. Here is a look at my photographer in the landscape taking pictures of the adeniums. I'm thinking for a companion planting, my black stand here goes quite well with the dark stand that the adeniums are on. So I just need to pick out a plant to go on this stand. Something that's sort of in scale with the desert rose. Here is a possibility. My living stones. They would look all right. My jades is another possibility, the little jade forest. Now I would have to take the moss out of there that's grown in. But that's another possibility. It looks small and miniature and goes quite well with the planting. I think that's the better one uh, because it's in a longer pot it fits the stand a little better so I think I'll do that I'll clean it up take the moss off and see how it looks. All right let's get this moss removed I'll use the tweezers and see if it pulls out. That's just grew in here. So these aren't Portula caryophras, they're actual jades and they're dwarf because they're growing in a small pot and it's that, it's the variety uh, from Connor's cuttings. They kind of get a nice color on the leaves in full sun, kind of a purplish color. Okay, that's looking better. 
I will need to clean up this pot here, getting rid of that fertilizer stains. The side's fairly good. I'll start by just scraping, scraping it off. Oh, it's really, really built up on there. Maybe I need a better tool. Try these scissors, they might get it off better. Yeah, that works better. Well, the front of the pot needs it too, it was just wet. So that's what the oil does on pots. It makes this calcium or fertilizer disappear. So I'll show you that. I'll oil the pot up. And you'll see it just blend in with the pot. I've got a bit of olive oil. And I'll just dip my rag in and just wipe it on the pot. So I think this is the front of the planting actually with the larger tree out front. So I'll just wipe it on the pot and you can see how the the stains on the pot just sort of disappear. And you can overdo the oil. Uh, if you get to the show and you're oiling your pot up at the show, uh, usually they look a little oily. So it's best to let the oil soak into the clay a bit so it looks a bit more natural. So here's the back now. I'll just rub that so it doesn't completely make it disappear but it sure makes it less noticeable to really clean the pot you need to soak it in vinegar without the tree in it and scrub it with soap and water and, and then do the final oil up I'll also put some oil on the desert rose planting Just a thin coat does it. After you've oiled up your pot, it's a good idea to wipe down the excess. Again, taking that shine off so it looks a little more of a matte finish. And don't forget about the feet underneath here. They need to be cleaned up also. So that's all looking good now. I'll make sure my photographer is set up here. There he is. My Socotra Island Desert Rose Forest Penjing is all show ready. Let's fly in now and have a final look. As the sand on the surface of the planting dries, it'll lighten up quite a bit and match the trunks of the adeniums more, and it'll make the whole forest look a little more harmonious. So that is all for this series. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. <laughs>